Hello guys, welcome back. So in today's episode, we are actually going to start the designing process of the Equatorial platform using a 3D CAD software called OnShape. And we will first do the design and then we will go back to the calculation. We will go back and have a relook at some of the designing parameters and again in the next episode we will come back and we will fine-tune the design the reason why we are doing this in two different uh, design loops is of course at first we need to start somewhere and when we do the first iteration of the design we would understand some of the design constraints and why it is necessary for you to have those parameters calculated in advance so that you don't have to repeat the design iterations again and again because it can be quite frustrating at times when you are at an advanced stage of design and assembly and then you realize you have you know done some fault and then you go back and start all over again so this is uh what i don't want you guys to do and this is the reason first we will do loop one design explain you the constraint the drawbacks we will go back to the calculation and we will come back again and we'll redesign the equatorial platform so let's start the 3d cad modeling first we will create the north bearing and for that we just need to decide the axis of rotation which is the elevation of polaris the angle of the latitude for my case it is 12.9 degree north now there are various ways of uh, modeling the similar things you can make a circle and extrude it or you can make a rectangle and revolve it there are there are, there are different ways so don't stick to just uh, the way that I am showing. There is a possibility that there is a you know, shorter way of doing things and based on your comfort level with different softwares, you can do that. Now we have the full uh, segment of the knot bearing uh, ready. Now we will cut it as per our top lead dimensions and we will get the knot bearing sector. Doing some dimension changes. So I am subtracting or removing the additional material and there we go, we have our knot bearing ready. Now for my references, I am drawing few holes in this knot bearing. I will use those as location marker during the full equatorial platform assembly, which you can see at the later part of the video. Just mirror it. And that's ready. Now let's make the south bearing a very similar process. Remember, our axis is at 12.9 degrees and that is my location. For you, you have to check your latitude. You can do that by going into Google Maps, going into your location coordinates. And the first, there will be two series of numbers. The first one would be your latitude. Now we need to optimize this in a way so that the axis of rotation are same but at the same time we do not end up making a bearing that's too large or too small. Mm -hmm. 
same process. Let's revolve it and we have it ready. We just need to cut the extra material off. Done. As we had done in our knot bearing, we will have our references ready so that it is easier for us to assemble. Okay, now let's make the top lead, which will be rigidly connected to north and south bearing. Now I'm drawing those references. You remember we had uh, made similar references on the bearing, so I'm just changing the dimensions to you know maintain a homogeneity between the north and south bearings. At this given point of time, often you would come across a situation where you would feel that the dimension choices that you had done previously were not very conducive and you need to go back and do that optimization. We will also touch base on this topic in the next episode about how to avoid design iterations. So we have it ready. We will put some fillets later for aesthetic purposes. Now let's create our assembly. So we have the north bearing, we have the south bearing, we have the plate. Now let's give a flush mate. Planar mate is done. It's also called constraints, assembly constraints. And now we will use those reference holes to put them in their respective places. Let's do that same for not varying. Done. A little bit of optimization, removing extra material. The sharp edges often doesn't look good and often it's not safe as well. So it's better to you know put, use as much fillets in your design as much as possible. It's not only safe, it's also aesthetically pleasing. Now let's again remove off some excess material so that the weight of our platform can be minimized. Please note that I have seen, you know, uh, some DIY projects uh, on the internet that people have used various other material. The material choice depends upon what is available to you. Some people use solid wood, some people use uh, engineered material, engineered wood, some people do use aluminium. But in case you are trying to use metal, specifically aluminium, please do remember it is very difficult to weld an aluminium and until and unless you have specific aluminium welding shops near you or you have your own machine in the garage, don't go for aluminium, I would suggest that. Steel will still make sense, but then it would make your platform immensely heavy. Until and unless you are designing an equatorial platform, some, something for your rooftop, it doesn't make sense to go for steel. Now 
let's make the bottom plate. This is the plate that will support all the bearings. By the bearing, I am not uh, meaning the north and south bearings, but the bearings over which the, these north and south segments would rotate. Again, let's do some fillets. And let's bring it back to our assembly. Let's put the constraints in place. A little bit of changing the dimension so that the bottom plate is a uh, slightly larger than the top plate. Again here I am trying to make a bearing. Uh, this is just for animation purposes so that I can explain it to you how the equatorial platform actually moves after it is assembled. Please note that this is not a real feature. In reality we will be supporting the north and south bearing using ball bearings. And also this feature is absolutely not mandatory for you to design. This is just for me to explain better. Once our constraints are ready, you can see how the equatorial platform now swivels along the polar axis. Now in this case, we see that the knot bearing has turned out to be quite uh, smaller and there is a chance that in case you are not using the additional dead weight, your telescope can topple. Now this brings me to the subject of the next video, which is what are all the different calculations you can do in advance to avoid a situation like this and avoid multiple design loops. Now this is just a cylinder, a long thin cylinder that I made just to demonstrate the array axis. Now you can see in this case because of 12.9 degrees it is much lower. You can see how it is uh, coinciding with the polar axis. However, the center of gravity is much larger. These are some of the topics we will cover in the next episode for your reference. So hope today's uh, episode was quite insightful for you guys and if you have watched my previous episode which was related to how we calculate the center of gravity before we start the design process if you haven't then please go back and have a view at episode 2. So thanks for watching today's episode. I hope you have started to gain some ideas related to how to design an equatorial platform. There are plenty of online articles uh, available as well and it would be very nice for you not only to depend on this particular video but also go and have a look at the various other design types that the amateur astronomers across the world have demonstrated. So thank you for watching today's video. Take care and clear skies. Bye-bye.